Hi everybody, so today we have a special project. Um, we are going to take this electric dryer and turn it into a heater. Um, there's only a couple of channels that I've actually that I've seen that have actually done this so we might be one of very few but I thought it would be a good project and I am going to go ahead and start taking everything apart um, I don't really have a way of for you to watch me while I do it because I'm very limited on space here but I'm gonna try and do some updates as I go and uh, kind of walk you through the whole build it really isn't all that uh, complicated it's actually pretty straightforward uh, as far as we are basically going to use every single bit of this thing including the timer and the power button uh, the only thing we're not going to use of course is the lint trap uh, we don't really need that but um, everything else we're pretty much going to use and this thing is going to go from its current size, which is know, about waist high to me, um, maybe three and a half, four foot tall, I guess, somewhere around in there, to uh, a very small unit, uh, probably anywhere from a quarter to one sixth the size that this one is. So uh, it should be a pretty interesting build. Uh, and hopefully it doesn't take a crazy amount of time. Uh, I'd really like to just have this thing working. And uh, from what I've been able to find out, uh, something like this that you can get relatively cheap. I paid $95 for this dryer only because the closest for free one was 170 miles away. So... Um, that was pretty much non-conducive to free. I might as well just pay money versus crazy amounts of gas to go get a free dryer. So I went ahead and uh, found this one on Craigslist and uh, paid 95 bucks for it. It was the cheapest one on there. Uh, it's a 240 volt, so I'm going to get to it and I'll try and keep you updated. One of the things I'd like to say is um, if you are buying or in the market to buy a used dryer, um, you want to probably at least vacuum some of the lint out because after all it is a fire hazard and this thing's, this thing's been around so it's got some lint in it. Uh, another thing is um, if you're worried about where your wiring goes, uh, what goes where and how and why um, These things will usually like most appliances. They will have a wiring diagram uh, more than likely it'll be inside um, or on the back um, Or you can do like what I'm gonna do and I'm just gonna use my smartphone and take a picture and uh, that way I'll be able to see what wires go where and I won't have to worry about labeling them all they're not these things are really not complicated there's really not a whole lot there's ground uh, you got I believe this is some kind of a um, fuse uh, you have your switch that's your on off switch this is your dial that sets your different uh, heat and time settings see I'm still pulling the lint off everything but I'm going to take some pictures and uh, like the the grounds uh, for any kind of household. I'm going to assume like if you're doing a job like this, you kind of understand household wiring, uh, 220 volt and 110 and, you know, not to take anything apart with it still plugged in. Please don't do that. Um, but just a quick update. I'll be right back. Probably been working on this thing about... Mm, 10, 10 minutes, give or take. For this one, there's a couple of clips in the front that you just pop the front up. And then it's got some brackets, uh, hinge type brackets in the back. 
that uh, it hinges open so that you could lift all this stuff up. So you got this door switch here and basically it needs to be closed for the dryer to run. Um, we're not going to have a drawer so we need to uh, basically what you do is you uh, disconnect that switch and then you splice these two wires together and that'll give you a closed, uh, a closed circuit instead of the open circuit without the door there. Uh, basically with electronics, with the switches, right now it's an open circuit. And then with the click, it's a closed circuit. So now it would actually work. Now it'll stop. So use something you keep in mind while you're doing this project. So basically this is your heating element and this is what we want. Down here uh, inside this housing is gonna be your, your blower motor. So that's also gonna be pretty important. As you can see, it's got tons of lint inside there. Well, we'll be able to clean it all up and we'll get rid of this drum and we're gonna utilize the sides here to make them part of our new box that we need because when you have 240 volts running to any kind of appliance what you don't want is open connections that you could trip and accidentally touch um, 110 volt will give you a really good shock 220 volts it can stop your heart so you want to be really careful with something like this so that you make sure you use all the the safety equipment that's already been designed into this um, but we'll be able to do all that no problem back in a second all right as you can see i've got the whole front apart got the drum out this is your, this is your belt don't need that this is your tensioner for your belt don't need that this is for the door don't need that. Some kind of plastic clip. Don't have any idea where it came from and I don't care. Don't need that. This is your door switch. What we're mainly concerned with is the motor. Like all these wheels, none of that stuff matters. We don't need any of it. So that's all going to go away. Basically our, our heater is going to be about that wide. Yeah, it might be a little wider just for the electrical stuff. Uh, I think I'm gonna do a double-sided deal so that I got some room for the electrical. Uh, basically we're gonna move this back wall back inside this enclosure more and then we'll use some of this enclosure to actually make our box. So uh, basically we're gonna probably be about that high so I don't know probably eight to ten inches I'd say somewhere on in there from the floor to here um, that's where our sides are probably gonna be and then so we'll be able to utilize this whole side here to fold it over and that will be our top and then we'll be able to use some of this side here to make the other side with and uh, I'm even going to use the original control panel to house my controls for this heater and uh, it should look pretty cool I don't know about uh, store-bought I don't know if it'll look store-bought but it'll look it'll look pretty good you can see all the lint on that motor we're going to blow all that off and get that all cleaned up so it's running as efficiently as it can. Uh, another thing I discovered was this is where uh, your exhaust goes. Uh, basically this motor sucks air and blows it out for your exhaust and it sucks the air through there. So it's kind of a I mean, it makes sense, but it doesn't make sense. You would think that it would want to blow the air through the heating element, but 
Um, I think that this is probably the, the safer way to do it. Um, but there was actually a, a dryer sheet covering about, oh, well, I was covering about that much of the grill there. So it, this thing wasn't even running as efficiently as it could. More coming soon. Well, as you can see, I have cut a huge chunk out of that plate, that back piece. There it is sitting over there, the chunk cut out of it. So that's basically going to be the size of our heater. Now I still have to cut the floor. So I'm basically going to cut the floor straight across. I'm also going to cut this off. This isn't needed. So I'm going to cut this off. That's going to get capped. And then I'm going to use the intake over here. And that's going to be what covers our fan and gets us some nice cold air coming in from the uh, outside of the box. So this So basically this is it going to be our intake and we'll cut it off probably right around here somewhere and then I'll have a grill for it to kind of keep any debris from getting in there or anything like that. Uh, still got to clean all the crap out of it. Holy cow, look. Uh, I don't think it covers the $95 I spent on this. I found two cents too. I found two pennies and a mostly broken pencil that's been chewed on by the fan, I think. Okay, but that's, uh, that's how we're going so far. I think I'm going to move these sensors. Um, I think this is a sensor for the... Uh, air temperature coming from the fan and I think that's kind of redundant I'm not gonna really need that anymore because now instead of pulling air instead of pulling air through the fan I'm pushing air out and through the heating element so I don't think now this is a safety item I'm probably gonna just put that someplace else uh, that's close and then I'm also going to, and then uh, this I think is going to end up being redundant and I'll probably, just for the lack of wanting to remove a bunch of wires and stuff, I'll probably just inside the box and I think that'll work out. I'm also going to, if you can see, it's got a shape to it that helps direct the air out of here. And what I want to do is move that around uh, to face the other way so that the air flows so that the air flows this way um, actually I'm looking at it fits the same on both sides mm -hmm. I'll just cap it I'll just cap this off I'll cap this off cut that off cap it I'll take these sensors off move them around Get them out of the way that's where i'm at right now another quick update i have blown out the back of that fan shroud that uh, directs the air out through the the back um, i've added inside there it's hard to see because i already bolted my intake on uh, but i have formed a piece of sheet metal and uh, to direct the air, the airflow in this way, it's probably not very easy to see in there. But um, so instead of it being flat, it's cupped in like that so that uh, it directs airflow 
that's going to go through my heat element. My heat element is going to basically sit like that. So I dish that so that it directs the air flow in through the heating element. It's going to blow air past the element and out through my uh, custom exhaust here. And what I did is I just cut the end off the heating element because this actually sits this end here, the grated end actually sits sideways. So I cut that off and I'll show you. So I cut it off and I kind of I ran into an issue. Uh, there's I cut it straight off as you can see and I cut it right at where it starts to kind of come up to the grill there but this particular model of dryer the heating element slides into it so this outer part is just a sleeve uh, I have another element and it's completely different than this one um, but it has like this bracket this angle bracket on the back end of the element and it kind of just rests against the duct here or the sleeve I guess you'd call it so uh, when I cut the end off of it because I cut right to the very start of the grill uh, this has nothing to lean against and it made this thing loose kind of so I just took a piece of uh, the shroud, the fan shroud that I wasn't using. I just cut up that and uh, put it in there and then just drilled some holes and used a couple of the sheet metal screws that I'm going to have plenty left over of and just put it in there like that. And then uh, I cut some slots in the side of the sh the sleeve the element housing and I'm using the back hinges to have it sit up off the floor of the heat the new heater and those are going to get welded I'm gonna weld them uh, to the floor here and then it's gonna make it so that it's not resting right on directly on the floor and hopefully give it um, some space so that you know the bottom doesn't get hot just the the tube here gets hot I also took the old door and it's just held it's like sandwiched together it's like two different pieces of steel there's the inside and they're uh, just held together with some uh, countersunk screws. So I just took and made the back and I had to cut a notch out there, but I made a back for this. As you can see, it sits pretty nice in there. Uh, I still got to trim some more of this floor up. I kind of cut it crooked. And that's on me, not on any kind of design issues. I just cut it crooked. So I got to straighten my cut up so it sits straight. And then I also, I actually had another set of sheet metal from another dryer that I had uh, taken apart that I was going to actually do this with. And then I just, I took too many parts off of it and I broke the fan taking it apart and all that so I have this door from another dryer that I'm using and you could have just I could have just cut uh, a chunk of flat steel from one of the sides uh, that I have I'm gonna have left over but I already had this door and it was much much smaller so I already have my hole laid out what I did is I set my heating element with the grill on there and I just kind of more or less traced around it. Um, it's not going to be a perfect hole. I can 
I mean, I think you and I both can see that. But um, I traced around it, and I'm going to cut that hole out so that that's where my heat's going to come out of. And I also used bracket, I guess, that would have actually been sitting on the back where your, your electrical outlet uh, plug comes out. And I use that for uh, like where I'm going to hang a lot of the wires from. And then once I get this set up and welded in place, once I get my hole cut in the, the front panel and get that set into place where I, it's definitely going, um, and I get this set in place, then I'm going to build my, uh, I guess you'd call it like a, a plenum or just some ducting uh, around that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to run the power wires around here. I have some uh, plastic clips that go around wires so that I can uh, attach it to that and hang so that I can plug uh, my two power wires in right there and they're not actually going to be laying on anything and the the clips came from this dryer so uh, I'm basically using all the stuff from this dryer except for the extra uh, dryer door I had that I'm just going to utilize because it's just it'll look better I think um, I'm going to do that and then uh, I've been trying to figure out whether I want to use the timer setup that's on this dryer or if I'm going to use uh, a more just an on off switch because uh, this particular dryer it only comes with a, uh, a 30 minute timer which is really not very long and I would hate to have to constantly get up and, and turn the heater back on after it gets to the to the cold air setting for the cool down setting. So I'm gonna um, try and come up with a way that I can get rid of the, the timer altogether and just do an on off switch. Um, I live in Missouri and it gets pretty cold here. So uh, I want to uh, have a way where I can just have it run and, and I don't have to worry about getting up and, and turning it back on and resetting the timer. And, Cause that's kind of, that would be kind of a, a pain in, to do because you can see right here that's that's what it says on there and it now there's there's like a very dry setting but I believe that that is still only going to be like a 30 minute setting um, so that's not going to be enough uh, I have one of the king heaters echo 2s and it works okay um it really i've got the 7500 watt with my two car garage and really i should have went with a bigger one but a bigger one was going to cost me like i think at the time it was going to cost me like six or seven hundred bucks and i think that this dryer heater is uh going to actually do a lot better because uh, even on that, even that one with the, the super high setting, um, like the air that comes out of it is, it's warm, but it's not, it's not hot. It's just warm. Where when you run one of these, uh, the heat that comes out of the end of it is gonna be hot. Like you're not gonna be able to have your hands sitting in front of it for very long, so. Just uh, my thoughts and something I'm trying to figure out how to do. Uh, I'm going to look into the wiring and see if there's some wires that I can uh, get rid of that I don't need. And then maybe I can bypass the timer altogether and just have an on off switch on it. And I think, uh, I think that would probably work pretty good. I'm going to... Um, probably use the on off switch that it came with because um, it was made for this so it'll handle the it'll handle the voltage and everything but I think I'm gonna try and see if I can bypass the timer itself and just have it turn on and turn off and 
be happy. Hey everybody, turn the electric dryer into a heater. The project is officially done mechanically. So I cut, cut a hole into the front here, heating element housing, and I cut the end off of it and spun it around and just kind of tack welded it on the end there. It, I mean, it's not going to get beat up or nothing. Uh, the housing here, the fan housing, I just kind of threw some sheet metal in there, kind of uh, just to direct the air. It doesn't have to be perfect. These things are not airtight at any by any means and any of the air that doesn't make it through the uh, heating element housing here um, will just help blow some of the air the hot air out of the system here um, that is a big mess of spaghetti wires but uh, and I could have shortened some of them but um, I just left them just how they were um, I made a new cable because I didn't like, uh, I didn't have a uh, the same plug out here in the garage that I that the uh, dryer came with, so I had to put a new cable on it, a new uh, plug end. Um, I had I had about probably 15, maybe 20 feet of uh, uh, electrical wire that I had uh, used for my hanging heater, so that I didn't have to drag my welding plug around quite so much. Um, I cut that in half, put a new plug on, on the electric heater because that one actually has a thermostat and this one doesn't. Something that I, I may end up working out. Um, but uh, then I just uh, put that plug end on here. And then that's the front. So I kept the controls of the original dryer and it works works great blows out plenty hot but you can almost it gets pretty warm um, it actually blows out hotter air than my uh, my actual garage heater does this thing actually blows out more air, more air hotter. I could actually feel a difference compared to how the other one um, All right, I'm back. And the dryer heater is finished. I'm sure you can hear static or something on your end. That is... My heater running. In there, you can see the heat element heating up. It blows some really hot air. Like, even having my hand that far away, it's it's warm. It's like scalding water warm for sure. And I discovered that if I have the heat setting, I'm sure you can see it right to there. It stays on basically indefinitely. to get up and change it. Uh, this was originally my shelf for my stereo and it had to be moved. So I moved my stereo over the other side of the garage. But works great. And I'm going to run this at the same time that I run my other heater. The one hanging over there. My Echo 2S, because I think that running them both at the same time is going to help catch it up when it's really cold out. Um, and then I can also, I have these set up on uh, welding plugs because they're 240 volt each. So what I do is I can have one hooked up and running while I have my welder plugged in and running and then that way I, I don't go without heat which was another problem that I was running into and I was going to put another welding plug in so this gave me a perfect excuse to to put another welding plug in 
That way I got one on this side of the garage and then I got one on my other side of the garage. So that kind of spreads me out. I've got a, probably a good 25 foot welding extension cord that I, I made. So it, that way I can get out into the, into the driveway if I gotta weld something out there. And then in the winter time, I can have two heaters going. And it's seems to be working pretty good. I just kicked everything back on after I wired it all up and uh, wired the plug up and that uh, seems to be helping. It would usually take quite a bit of time before my thermostat on the uh, Echo 2S would start climbing. And it's climbing pretty fast now. So like I have to have the garage heater set to like 78 degrees because it just, it never really gets warm in here. Uh, even though it says it's 78, like the further away you walk from the heater, the colder it gets. Like standing here, which would be in front of the heater where it blows out, that seems to work pretty good. But like if you stand over there where my cabinets are and where I mix paint or anything like that, I got a little workbench over there. Um, if I stand over there, it's it's still chilly out. It's still chilly in the garage, no matter if that's sitting at 77 or 78 degrees, it's still cold over there. So that's it. I got it finished and it works great. And you can see it doesn't take up a lot of space. See, it doesn't take up a lot of space. Uh, I got it set up. It was sitting on the ground here, and that was kind of a pain to step over. Now I just got all the scrap parts. Got to go to the scrap yard. <laughs>